this is review of kites and trapezoids, which was the first the first topic that we talked about in unit six. How many of you have studied your green properties page enough to where you feel pretty confident on the properties? Okay. Like, what if I put it? What if I just put that stapled onto your final and it was blank and said, "If you want to use this, fill it out." How would you do on that? You rate yourself. Like, just think about it. A blank green sheet. And if you want the reference, you fill it out. Could you do it? Okay. Think about being able to by next week. Okay. The reason why, if you don't know your properties, it's kind of, it's kind of like trying to run and you can't walk. It's you stumble and you trip and you don't really know what to do. And oh, maybe you grab this property and really should have grabbed this one, right? Because you don't really know what's on the sheet. So, my, I'm telling you that to say this. Just because you have your notes doesn't mean they'll help you if you don't know what they say or what they mean, right? So study them, get them in your head so you know them really well. On these, if I give you a problem like either of these top two on the test, what should you say? Being realistic, what should you say? Huh? Okay, so this is what I mean by properties, partially. This is on your pink notes. If I hand you a problem like either of those two, the way it's displayed on the screen, you should walk up to me and say, we can't solve these. You did something wrong, Mr. Erickson. And why is that? If you can't tell me, you need to be able to by next week. I have two people. Okay, two people. Couple more, good. And I'm not trying to pull your leg, like, I'm serious. If, if I handed you the problems like this, you would need to say, there's an issue, you can't do this. Why? Okay, so we don't know what shape they are other than the way it looks. Also, good job. Yeah, you don't know if those lines like MP on the left one, you don't know if that line bisects the two legs, right? So you're kind of stuck, because if it doesn't bisect, can you use the mid-segment theorem? Yeah. No. Okay, so be thinking, is this okay to do? I would need to tell you that these two side lengths are bisected, those two legs. Anyway, with that knowledge, now we can use the mid-segment theorem. And it's this. Mid-segment length is half of base 1 plus base 2. Does it matter which one you pick for base 1 or base 2? No? So, I'm just going to say x equals 1 half times 17 plus 11 which makes x a so half of 28, which makes x 14. Okay? If you're just given numbers, you don't need to worry about multiplying by 2, right? All right, cool. Next one, same thing. You need to be told that the legs are bisected. And then, uh, let's see, I'll put this one here. Now we have 16 equals 1 half of 3x plus 7 plus 4x minus 3. Josh, I'm going to ask you because you already said this. How do we get rid of the half? Good. So we're multiplying both sides by 2. Um, a quick word about that is that make sure you don't distribute this 2 that you're writing all the way across. Because it's canceling with the first, the 1 half 2. Right? It's canceled. Multiply the other side so we get 32 and... Now we just have this inside part, which is 7x plus 4. I can do that. Okay. And then solving from there, minus 4, 28 is 7x, so x is 4. How'd this go? 
Okay? What if I put it on there and you do it without the notation? Is it right? I'm not going to do that to you. Just, so you. Just know that you need to know your properties, right? Okay. Next section, it does say trapezoid, so we at least know that it is that. It says TGO, angle TGO is 123. I would label the figure. What do we know about trapezoid angles? Yeah, right. A diagonal Okay. Um, he said the diagonals are congruent, which is true in an isosceles trapezoid. Is this an isosceles trapezoid? No. I think it is. It doesn't say it is, but I, it sure looks like it. Is it okay to say it looks like it? But what is there that makes me for sure that it's an isosceles trapezoid? So these tick marks on the side tell us the legs are congruent, which does make this isosceles. Good. Uh, but again, let's talk about the angles in here. What do we know about angles in a trapezoid? They are... Okay, so base angles are congruent. So I could copy angle G to angle T. That's, those are both base angles. How about angle AOG, this bottom left one? Yeah, go ahead, Logan. What? How'd you get 57? Ultimate interior. Or no, not ultimate. Interior. Good, same side interior. So G, angle G and angle O are supplementary. Right, so we just subtract. If angle O is 57, then A is also. Okay, quick check. Um, this test is on chapter 6, but this notation is back clear from chapter 1 or unit 1. So make sure you know how to read it so you know which angle you're actually trying to give me. Okay? Um, kites. Tell me about kites. Pretend you're filling out your green sheet. What what all do you know about kites? Um, okay. Yeah, go ahead, Jay Brooks. Um, the diagonals in the middle always have 90 degree angles. In the okay, I'm going to write that in here. So, diagonals are perpendicular. Two pairs of what kind of congruent sides? Did we write that? Um, no, no. Okay. Uh, everybody grab that sheet and let's add a word. So on the kite, where we wrote two pairs of congruent sides, as we get into proving, you're going to need to add this word. Two pairs of congruent consecutive consecutive side. What does consecutive mean? We've written that word on here before. So it means in, like as you go around the figure they are in order, right? <coughs> Why are we writing that, do you suppose? Good job, that's exactly right. Because you do what I say. <laughs> Man, finally someone's getting it. <laughs> I want you to look over here to the left. Just look just to the left of the kite. If we didn't say consecutive and we showed that we had congruent sides, what else could it be? You see how that could also be a parallelogram? Okay, so write the word consecutive. Back here on the kite. This one happens to be all about angles. What else do we know about angles in a kite? Good, I would do this. So EG, in the figure, EG is the long diagonal. So I would start... Marking that those the angles at E are congruent and the angles at G are also congruent. 
to each other, not across the figure. What else do we know? Yeah, the whole thing on, in this case, EH, the whole angle is congruent, okay? Now when we go fill out that FHG is 68, 68 goes there for FHG, and FEH, the whole, the whole thing, is 62, well now we can start breaking this down. Uh, tell me about those two angles at E. She's not here. The two little red ones that I wrote at E. If the whole thing is 62, what do we know about the little ones? They're both 31. Yeah. All right, so at E, both of those angles are 31. How do we get angle H, G, J? I'll put a dot. Angle H, G, J. How do we get that angle? Okay, so we know that at J, all angles are 90. That's 68. Yeah, good. So those are 158, so that's 22. What can you do at the 22? What can you do at the 22? Copy it up. And you guys, I think by this point you're... you're You've done this a bit, so you kind of get the hang of it. What can we copy from this 68? Where can we copy it? Good. And then the only other little piece that we need would be like angle EHJ. So on the other side of the 68. How do you get that one? Well, the 62 is the whole thing. Yeah, so now that we have the two 31s, I'm going to erase the 62, just so it's not too busy. It still kind of is, but... Yeah, 180 minus 31 minus 90. So 121 from 180. Uh, what is that? 59. So, you should have, in different places, you should have 90... 31, 22, and 59. Oh, and 68. How'd that go? Right now you should ask a question if you don't get it. Your future could depend on it. What do I mean by that? Do you want to retake geometry? Because I sure wouldn't. That's for sure. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, you you too, right? Probably worse than me. Okay, last one. I didn't have you do this one, but let's use it to review. This one is talking about lengths in. A kite, and so what do we know about solving with lengths in a kite? Like, how do you solve with lengths in a kite? For example, if we know FH is 34, like it says, FH is 34, how long is EJ? EJ is from E to the middle. 17, right? Okay, if I tell you, so we know now that EJ is um, 17, if I told you maybe that JG is 20, how would you solve for EG? How would you solve for EG? E, here, I'll highlight EG. It's the top right line. Good thing we're reviewing this. It's not just 17 plus 20. Everybody, Mazikeen lives at 17, 20 something. Yeah, you got it, Logan. Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? Or a Dude, how many times have I done that? I'm going to miss that, honestly. Alright, 17. 
and 20 are both legs in a Pythagorean theorem or in a right triangle, right? So he's right, it's exactly a Pythagorean theorem. So 17 squared plus 20 squared equals x squared. And then how do you solve when you have to use the Pythagorean theorem yeah, square root? All right, cool. How do you feel about kites and chopper blades after a couple weeks? Doing okay with them? Okay, grab your homework, which looked like this. It was a triangle that you're trying to prove what kind it is. So we need to prove if this is isosceles equilateral or scalene, and what does what do those words reference? In terms of what we can prove with numbers, what is it talking about? Those are all references to... Okay. Equilateral isosceles scaling, those are all referencing a specific aspect of a triangle. The yeah, the side length. Oh, you said that? I didn't hear. But you didn't say side length. Okay, I got it. Okay, how do we prove side length? Like, um, looking at your notes from last time, you know what, let's, do, let's review those right now. Grab this page, your pink one. And let's review how to use or what tools we can use to do coordinate proofs. What are coordinates? What are coordinates? X, Y coordinate pairs from either a list or from a graph, okay? Because that's how you're going to see them. So, tools we have are slope. Uh, remember, it's change in y over change in x, and you can either calculate it or count on a graph. If you decide to count on a graph, please show your work, uh, at least write it out, like m equals 5 over 2, or I don't know. I'll show you what I mean. We have, uh, we wrote some information about slope, so parallel slopes have the same number, they're the same slope. We're going to use perpendicular slope here in just a few minutes on this problem. I lost you. Are you reviewing? Now get your hands out. Like, remember what I said at the beginning of class. Perpendicular slope has to have two things. They have to be opposite sign and flipped over. So don't turn your slopes into decimals. Here's why. You don't need to write this down, but... Let's say you calculated 0.4 and 2.5 as slopes. Are those reciprocals? How do you know? Well, you don't. And, and so this is what I'm saying. 0.4 is 2 fifths. 2.5 is 5 halves. Are those reciprocals? Yeah. Don't make them decimals. You won't notice if they're reciprocals or not. Okay. Even though I know you don't like fractions, leave them as fractions. Then we have the distance formula. That's to prove if lengths are congruent, which is what we're about to do. Then we talked about the midpoint formula. That's to prove if we're dealing with bisectors. Okay. Uh, name a figure that we can use bisectors to prove something about. In other words, name a figure that has something bisected that has to do with side lengths. Trapezoid, no. Kite. Uh, kite bisects. Yeah, I guess one bisects the other. Who said that? Is that you, Jessica? I said Okay. So, kites, remember the long diagonal bisects the short one only? What else? What else? Um, a rectangle. A rhombus. Right, rectangles, rhombuses, and? Squares. And? And a parallelogram. So all parallelograms, right? Mm -hmm. Their diagonals bisect each other. So you could use that to show if something is a parallelogram. 
All right, let's go do this one. Remember to subscript your all your calculations. So I'm going to start with YZ and the distance formula because all of those words have to do with side length. So we're going to go 8 minus 5. Those are the x coordinates. 8 minus 5 squared plus 6 minus 8 squared. 8 minus 5, that one's positive, but still keep it in parentheses. This next piece is why we wrote the, the warning to keep it in parentheses. So 6 minus 8 is negative 2 squared. If you don't put it in parentheses, let me show you what's going to happen. Let's go. Put, let's pretend you're you're doing this without parentheses because you didn't follow directions. Here's what's going to happen to you. You're going to put negative two squared, and you're going to get negative four. Is that right? Is negative two squared negative four? No. Yes. In this way, it is correct. Is that what we want? No. No. So if we put negative 2 in parentheses and square it, now we get what we want. Okay? That's because of order of operations. It is exactly because of order of operations. Good. All right, so yz is square root of 13. Let's do the next one. My recommendation is just go around the figure. So zx is next. And the x-coordinates are 8 minus 1 squared plus 6 minus 2 squared. So we get 4 squared, or 16. I guess I'll write it out. Plus 4 squared. Uh, this is 7, not 4. Sorry about that. So 49 plus 16 is 65. But keep your square root on there. Do we need to do the square roots? No, because we can compare square roots as easily as we can decimals, right? Well, is it equilateral? No. It's definitely not that, which I don't think any of us thought that it was, but it's for sure not equilateral because we have very different side lengths already. Let's do the last one. So distance of x, y. So 5 minus 1 squared plus 8 minus 2 squared. Uh, one thing I'll mention, it doesn't matter if you do 5 minus 1 or 1 minus 5, but you have to do it the same way for both x and y. Like, don't switch your order. That will throw things off. So 4 squared plus 6 squared. So 16 plus 36 is... 52, so square root of 52. So what kind of triangle is this? So far, what kind of triangle is this? Scalar, are you with me? It's scalene. Scalene means no sides are the same. Okay? But we have not proven if it's a scalene right triangle or just a scalene triangle. So how do we show right triangle? Yeah. Okay. We absolutely could plug the legs in and the hypotenuse and see if it's going to be a, a right triangle. So I'll do it that way just so you can see. And then I also want to show you the slope method too. Guys, these are our lengths. So square root of 13, square root of 65, square root of 52. Here's what's cool about right triangle is once you, what happens when you square a square root? What does a squared do to a square root? It cancels. So if, if you write it out this way, square root of 52 squared plus square root of 13 squared equals square root of 65 squared. We're just plugging our lengths into the Pythagorean theorem. Well, the squareds cancel the roots, and we get 52 plus 13. Does that equal 65? 
So is it a right triangle? Okay. That's one way that we could prove it's a right triangle. But there is another way. And I do want to use that just to demonstrate how we would check slope. Okay? Well, first... In here, which angle looks to be right, or at least possibly could be? Yeah. Z. Angle Z, do you guys agree? Yeah. Obviously, it's not X. We're not even going to check X, right? So how do we use slope to see if Z is possibly a right angle? It's on your pink sheet. Yeah, they need to be opposite reciprocals. So let's try it with the slope method. I'm going to grab a picture of that so I don't have to scroll 85 times. So which lines do we need to check the slope on to see if Z is a right angle? What was it? Which lines do we need to know the slope for to see if Z is a right angle? Yep. At YZ and XZ, right? So remember M is for slope, so slope of YZ, we're going to get uh, Y coordinates are so remember, slope is change in y over change in x. y is on top. So 6 minus 8 over 8 minus 5, which is negative 2 thirds for, for yz. Okay, now let's do the slope of xz. And for that, x coordinate, or excuse me, y coordinate, 6 minus 2 over 8 minus 1, which is 4 sevenths. Are those opposite reciprocals? No, so Z is not a right angle. What other angle could be? Angle Y, so which slope do we need for that? Y, Yeah, we need to know the slope of X, Y. So let's do it real fast. Slope of X, Y. And we can just do 8 minus 2 over 5 minus 1, which is 6 over 4. Remember to reduce all slopes. What does this reduce to? Three halves. What do you notice? So is Y a right angle? Yes? Why? Like, how come? Why is Y a right angle? They're not just reciprocals, they're also, what's the other requirement? They're also opposite sign, right? So one's positive, one is negative. So opposite, these are opposite reciprocal slopes. Slopes. So Y is right. Okay? Guys, we just did a coordinate proof. You didn't need to do the right triangle part two different ways. You pick a way, but we just did a coordinate proof. Yeah. Okay. Um, basically, your work for a coordinate proof needs to be all the calculations and then a summary statement saying what you think it is and why. It's very similar, I think we talked about this, to your CER from your... Um, literacy class. What is CER? Okay, so we made a claim. Sort of at the beginning it was, is it a right scaling triangle? <coughs> All the work is our evidence. Without the reasoning, 
which is uh, what we wrote down, like the word part, then you're, the process is incomplete. Okay? Let's do another one. Grab your notebook paper so you can write this down. And you have it printed as a slide. Let me scroll down. There's one. So it's the second one that looks like this. Where we're um, Write these coordinates down, please. Two, four, one, two, five, one, and four, negative one. Okay, so we're trying to prove if this is a parallelogram. Which means, and this time it's telling you directly what you're trying to prove. The next one is just going to say, what's, what is it? Okay, that's all it's going to ask us. So, first thing you need to make sure you do correctly is plot the points accurately. So, 2, 4, and make sure you label 2 over 2, up 4, that's A. Over 1, up 2, is B. Over 5, up 1, that's C, and over 4, down 1, is D. Okay, connect your, connect your points. Now you have something to look at, right? Now you're going to have to decide when you do these on your own, which you'll have a chance to do here in a little while. Are you going to use the graph and count slopes or distance? You can't really count distance on a graph, but... Or are you going to use the coordinates that are listed up above? I typically use the coordinates that are listed up above for me. But you can do it a different way if you want to. Well, hold on. First thing I want you to notice on this sheet... Notice that all four of those methods to prove parallelograms are side length kind of things, right? You can't really prove angles using coordinates, except for using slope to prove 90. You're not going to prove angles are bisected. That doesn't work. Like, how would you? That means you have to prove degrees using points on a graph. You, you can't, right? Like, at this point in your math career, you can't. It's not that I'm saying it's impossible, but we can't do that. So all four methods are going to require something with sides, like or diagonals. So it's either lengths or slopes, but not angles. So which one? Everybody just quietly think to yourself on your sheet. Mine's pink, yours is orange. Which method would you pick because you feel more most comfortable with it? Don't shout it out. You pick the method you would choose. Like what clicks best with you. I'm going to bring this sheet up so we can talk about it.
Okay, everybody hold it up on your fingers. Again, there's no right answer, just which of these works best for you. Okay, so far I've seen one, two, and three. There's a four. You're the first one that said four. Two, okay, two of you. All right, so definitely most popular would be two and three. A couple of fours. And then there was, I think, just one or two ones. Okay. All of those are fine. Again, I'm telling you this so that you choose the one that's going to work best for you. Because that's what you need to be uh, confident. Alright, so we're trying to prove it's a parallelogram. Again, pick one of these. I don't care which one. First person I hear yell it out is the one we're doing. Three, two. Four. Two. Three. I heard two, 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 two first. Yep. Over here, actually. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to show both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. So basically we're going to do four slope calculations, looking for all slopes, well, slopes in pairs to be the same. All right, let's do it. Subscripting. So I'm going to start with AC. Again, you guys, we can count boxes on the grid, or you can use numbers from the list. I think I'll do two counting boxes and two from the numbers. So for AC. <laughs> AC is going to look like this. So 5, sorry, that's the next. 1 minus 4 over 5 minus 2. So negative 3 over 3. Reduce all slopes. <coughs> that becomes negative 1. Everybody follow where that came from? Yes. Okay. So which side should match that one? BD. Let's do BD next. If you're thinking CER, what step are we doing? Right now? The E, right? All right, BD up here, BD, negative 1 minus 2 over 4 minus 1. So negative 3 over 3, which is negative 1. Well, it's looking good so far. What happens if, I, if we calculated BD and it was different? What should you do? What? Okay, so listen, I asked, what if you calculated B, BD and it's different? Well, I would do one of two things. I would either double check this arithmetic or go count in the picture. But you need to double check, especially when it looks so strongly like a parallelogram. Okay? Because maybe you made a mistake. You don't want to let a mistake let you say it's not a parallelogram if it was just an error. Okay? Are we good so far? Let's go do A, B. Let's try, this time, let's just count. So we know it's change in Y over change in X. From B to A, we went up 2. So 2 goes on top. We went over 1. So 1 goes on bottom. So our slope is just 2. And then C, D. Again, from D to C, we go up 2 and over 1. So those two are also the same. Is it a parallelogram? Yes. Okay, so now we need to do the R part of CER. You don't need to write a book. Math teachers don't like that. Your reasoning can say this. A, B, C, D is a p-gram because two pairs of parallel sides. In fact, abbreviate parallel with the symbol. Okay? Done. Good enough? If you forget to write that part, is your proof done? No. No, no it's not. Alright, let's do another one. There it is. Go ahead and write. You guys, somebody put into words how this proof is different than the one you just did. 
How is it different? I don't want you to do any work. Just pause and listen. How is this proof different than the one we just did? Yeah. There's negative coordinates. Okay. Negative coordinates. It's not parallel. They're all quadrilateral. We don't know what Aha, there you go. Okay. If you didn't hear, look at your green sheet with me for a second. This one doesn't direct you at all. You know it's a quadrilateral because it has four vertices, but otherwise, you're at the very top of your green sheet. You don't, you don't know if to go right or left or straight down, right? This is what you need to be prepared to do on your test on Wednesday next week. Here are four coordinates, pairs, what is the shape? And you have to prove as far down as you can go. So that's what this most specific classification words mean. How far down your green sheet can you go? and still be legit, okay? So go ahead and graph them, and I'll do it too up here. What do you think it might be? Okay, so we're thinking rhombus or square. So what do we have to prove? Let's say we want to do square all the way down the sheet. In order to get to square, what do we have to actually be able to prove? So look at your pink or orange sheets. Do we have to prove all nine or ten properties of a square? No. But, notice, so on your pink or orange sheet, notice that all of the ones below, well not the trapezoid, but all the parallelograms, say prove that it is a parallelogram first. Prove it's a parallelogram first, and same here, okay? It doesn't say that, it implies it. So, we have to know it's a parallelogram before we can prove anything else. Okay. So tell me how we can prove that it's a parallelogram, thinking ahead to how we'll prove it's a square. Does that make sense? Because you can make this like a lot more work or less work depending how you think about the first steps. Okay, she's saying this if you didn't hear. If I do all, if I do method two from parallelograms, I will know all the slopes. Knowing all the slopes proves it's a parallelogram, but also what else does it prove? If it's a rectangle, right? Yeah. I said right. That's what I, I heard you. You need a microphone. Okay, again, four calculations, four lines. If you do all slopes, not only will you know if it's a parallelogram, but you'll also see if it's got 90 degree angles. Right? How many 90 degree angles do we need to prove for it to be a rectangle? How many 90 degree angles do we need to prove to show that it's a rectangle? Two. One. Just one. Why is it one? Give me a mathematical reason why it's just one. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, but if we only show one is, how can we know that the other three also are? Because the diagonals are congruent. Doesn't have to do with diagonals. Okay. Look at me. Think of a rectangle, same side interior angles, that would make that other one 90. And then opposite angles, 
are also congruent if it's a parallelogram. So if one is 90, all four of them have to be, okay? So again, listen to me. If you do four slope calculations, you will know if it's a parallelogram and a rectangle just by doing four cups, okay? We need to bring in a rhombus. If you're looking at your green sheet, bring in a rhombus property to prove that it's also a rhombus. So what other calculations would we need to do for that? Okay, so she just said all four sides are equal. That would mean you'd have to do four more calculations for distance. Is there a way to not do four more? What if we just did two more slope calculations to prove diagonals are perpendicular? No, I'm just repeating. They don't hear you. Good job. If you don't want me to repeat, you say it loud. Then all I have to do is say, yeah, what you said. Okay. So then you don't have to do six calculations. Do you see that? You do six slope calculations. Alright, guys, the flip side of this, if you do four distance calculations, you'll know it's a rhombus. And then add in two slope calculations so you know it's a rectangle. Either way, you only have to do six, not eight. That's the point. Which way do you want to go? You want to do distances or slopes? We're gonna we're gonna do we're gonna do distance. The reason why is because we did slope last time. Okay. Let's do it together. Actually, do you want to just? I'll give you a few minutes. You guys do it yourselves. It's fine. Okay, so AB, 4 minus 0 squared plus 3 minus 0 squared, that's squared is 25 or 5. And let's just go around. So AB and then BC. So again, I look up at the coordinates. You can go count. It's, it's just whatever works for you. So on this one, we have 7 minus 4 squared plus negative 1 minus 3 squared. That's also 5. So it's 3 squared plus 4 squared. So we're good so far, meaning it's looking squarish. Okay, and then CD is going to be 3 minus 7 squared. There's our 4, okay, so it's tracking with the other. And then negative 4 minus negative 1 squared. What happens when we subtract a negative? It's really adding. So it's negative 4 plus 1, which is, there's our 3. Okay, so this becomes 5 as well, and then last one, DA, or AD, either way. This time, be careful as you look across the list if you're doing it that way. So 3 minus 0 squared, there's our 3, negative 4 minus 0, there's our 4. So it's 3 squared plus 4 squared again, which is 5. What can we conclude at this point? I would pause here and write, start writing part of your R in the CER. Because we know this is something now. And what would, what is the most specific classification so far? It's a rhombus. Good. So A, B, C, D is a rhombus. Because all sides are congruent. Okay? So we just need to bring in something from rectangle in order to prove that it's a square. So notice, back on your reference sheet, if you're just rolling with distance, you could prove the diagonals are congruent and do two more distances. If you wanted to switch over and do a slope, you could do method two under rectangle and show that it has a right angle by doing slope which is how I'm going to do it, just so we have a good review of everything. So I'm going to switch over and do slope. Again, we only need to prove that one angle is 90. So I'm going to pick angle A. So I need the slope of AB, and I need the slope of DA. And then if they're opposite reciprocals, then we're good. So AB... 
Um, I'm scrolling on this. It's old. A B was three minus zero over four minus zero. So our slope of A B is three fourths. Again, you could go count it on the on the picture. In fact, that's what I'm going to do this time. From A to D, we went down one, two, three, four, five. Well, I went too far. One, two, three, four, and we went over one, two, three. So this one is negative four thirds. Are those opposite reciprocals? Yep. So my continued continued CER R part would say these are opposite reciprocals. So A B C D is a square. Okay, that's a full coordinate proof. Um, I think it's worth seven points. The one problem is basically two to two and a half times all of other questions on there. So make sure you know how to do it. Okay. Any questions on it? What do you think? Are these easier than regular proofs? Yeah. Yes. 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 Yes.